Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Taryn Arula, the Associate Professor of Cardiology at the Zucker School of Medicine, Associate Director of the Lenox Hill Women's Heart Program, and CNN Medical Correspondent. I'm thrilled to be here today, joined with my two wonderful colleagues, Dr. Jill Kalman and Dr. Stacy Rosen. Dr. Rosen, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Thanks, Tara. And it's wonderful to be here with you and Jill today. I'm Dr. Stacey Rosen. I am the Partners Council Professor of Women's Health at the Zucker School of Medicine and a practicing cardiologist. I'm the Senior Vice President of the Katz Institute for Women's Health here at Northwell. Dr. Kalman, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you, Tara and Stacy, And it really is a pleasure and honor to be here today. I'm Dr. Jill Kalman. I'm a cardiologist and I'm the Chief Medical Officer and Deputy Physician in Chief of the Northwell Health System and the first woman Chief Medical Officer for Northwell Health. So thank you. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, both of you, for joining us today for this very important discussion. I want to start off with you, Dr. Kalman, a little bit about what the health provider landscape vis-a-vis -vis reproductive services looks like in the face of the recent Roe v. Wade decision. Thank you, Tara, for that question. And I'm certainly extremely passionate about this issue as many, many people are. And in terms of the landscape right now, how we take this on is that reproductive rights is healthcare and it's safe healthcare. And abortion is more than a reproductive right. It is healthcare as well. And it's a physician's obligation to discuss the health risks of pregnancy. We have a passion and an obligation to take care of our patients in a shared way and to have shared decision-making. So this of a pregnant woman, those decisions should only be made by a healthcare professional. And this ruling reduces safe medical choices for women. And unfortunately women may die as a result of this because this impedes safe abortions. So it puts our women at risk as patients. And honestly, it puts our providers, clinicians, our doctors, our nurses, and other clinicians at risk of not being able to make the safest decision. So much, I, I wanna move on from that and ask you, what do you think the biggest issues are at this point when it comes to safe access to reproductive services? Yeah, well, we can't, and so in the States where it's, no longer legal to perform abortions. The other methods used, whether they are other in invasive procedures or medications that will end pregnancies are not the safest, safest options. And there are women also because of health risks should make their own decision about whether it is safe to proceed with a pregnancy or not. And that's what makes it unsafe for women. And those are extremely dangerous paths to go down. If a woman can't make her own decision with the knowledge of what her risks are to make a decision whether to continue with that pregnancy or not. And that's why this is healthcare and safe healthcare. Dr. Rosen, women's health of course is more than just this one issue. Where do we need to go holistically speaking? What are the current barriers and challenges that you think are most urgent? And how do you think providers can think about overcoming those? You know, thanks, Tara. And Jill, I want to commend you for the leadership role that you've taken in this. And Northwell does see healthcare procedures, women's health, especially as being something that is a priority for us. And as we all know, this whole um, discussion gets in the middle of the doctor patient relationship. You know, ironically, when Roe v. Wade was first um, settled, one of the justices commented that it should be this way because we legal issues shouldn't be in the way of the doctor patient relationship. So this is so much more than a political argument. Um, healthcare for about a hundred years or more has always had a male model. And, you know, we studied men, we evaluated diseases in men, and then we realized that men and women are the same, are not the same. Every cell in our body is either male or female. Disease presentations, uh, how medications work, survival in certain conditions are completely different between men and women. Um, interestingly, we're three cardiologists in this discussion, and the cardiac story is sort of classic. We were all originally thought as, as younger doctors that 
heart disease is a man's illness. And then we started seeing more and more women dying of heart disease. And it wasn't until we started studying the differences in how women present, risk factors that are different, the way women um, uh, uh, present with their symptoms, how they behave with certain medications, did we realize that we really needed to take a sex and gender based look and I think for the barriers, you know, we're still seeing, unfortunately, that um, haven't we finished? Haven't we done this already? And this is not a time to be complacent because in certain disease states and certain conditions for women, we still aren't making the advances, still not doing the needed science, still not supporting with advocacy and, and, and um, you know, other ways, the opportunity to really improve the health of women. Thank you, Stacey. You know, there was a recent report uh, about how the world is really failing women when it comes to their health care, particularly preventive health care. And so when you think about women's health and where we are headed, I know we focus a lot on the negatives and what we're not doing right, but what makes you optimistic for the future? I want to start with you, Dr. Kalman. Well, several things that I think, Tara, starting with prevention, I think as much as we can go upstream, look at those at risk and start pre prevention, there are many lifestyle modifications that we know are proven to work. So that makes me optimistic. We just have to get the message out there. But what also makes me optimistic is that we at Northwell, we're poised to make change. And what we hope and are doing is really to create interdisciplinary programs specifically for women that put the that puts the woman at the center to really solve these differences in sex and gender differences that understand their disease better to raise money to get grants to raise scholarship so that we can really further identify the differences and that what makes me optimistic in addition what makes me optimistic is the flip side of roe v wade is really taking on positively healthcare crises so that we can make change. So I think there's a lot to be thankful for. And certainly in women's health and specific diseases, we are approaching that, I think, in change and innovation across our entire health system. Thank you. And Dr. Rosen, what are your thoughts? What, what brings you hope and what makes you optimistic? Yeah, no, absolutely. That there, there's a hashtag that's been floating around more work to do. And I think this is the golden opportunity. Jill alluded to partnerships. And what's making me optimistic are partnerships that I see here at Northwell outside of what were historic academic silos. But in addition to that, I'm seeing partnerships between academic health systems like ours, advocacy and regulatory agencies, the FDA, the NIH, partnering with large health systems. Women are more empowered through channels like your reporting and the media that helps women better understand ways to advocate for themselves. And finally, the private sector and putting these partnerships together are really going to allow us to get out of historic silos and, and, and look to a more holistic approach to improve the health of women. I also yeah. think the younger generation is, is something that I'm very optimistic about. I would agree. And I was just going to add to that. I, I think what, how we're approaching this is really looking all patients across the continuum and women as well. So that's going to be from, from babies to in, you know, infants and babies to adolescents and then women and disease. But looking at that, whether you're pregnancy, post childbearing years, premenopausal, menopausal, we are looking at the entire spectrum of how we can make a difference. And that's extremely exciting to look at it as a continuum in that way. And very, so, unique, very unique, I would say for us here at Northwell. I'm gonna add one other thing. I'm gonna add that one other thing that we're really focused on is women's leadership. And that's another way of raising women's health. When we focus on women's leadership, we focus on women's health as well. I'd agree more. And we have so many fabulous women leaders at Northwell um, that we are privileged to work with. And I think exactly what you said, it's about looking at this through the lens of a continuum, looking at this as a multifaceted approach that we need to take. And also I think finally teaching women to advocate for themselves. We always talk about that, but at the end of the day, you know, women really do have to stand up for their health as well. Final thoughts? Dr. Kalman, Dr. Rosen. 
Stacey, do you start? Oh, all right. You know, I, I think there are a lot of um, things to be worried about and a lot of reason for concern. But quite honestly, there are more reasons to be optimistic, as we discussed. 50% um, of our medical school class is female. You know, I think sometimes you have to be challenged with real loss of healthcare issues and opportunities to really galvanize a population. And I think putting the women at the center of, of what we do to improve access, preventive opportunities, the science of, 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 of uh, sex and gender, it, 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 it is, will get better and better because the women will demand it. I, I, I like that last comment and I will um, augment on that. And then I said, let's put the woman at the center Let's figure out the gender and sex differences in disease and in prevention. Let's create programs around her and really take care of the entire woman to really raise health and make a difference. And again, we are poised to do that, to innovate, to make change, to partner and deliver safe healthcare. Thank you so much for your insight, wisdom, for your leadership, and for everything you do to take care of women. You're so appreciated. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you both.